and Scott and I were both, we should have gone on, on the air that day and said, this guy killed this little girl. You're going to find her here. Yeah. Before, before we get started, I want to try something. Greg, what will happen is you'll say action. And then Chase, you're going to say, Bowden, you're a monster. And then <laughs> in your best James Bond, Mark, you got to say, come, come, Mr. Hughes. You enjoy killing just as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> and do you want it in the, um, in the, um, Scottish Bond. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah if you got it. Okay, so Greg, anytime you're ready. Ready? Right. Right, this is a setup, guys. <laughs> no, go ahead. I want to I see. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Anytime you're ready, Greg. Action. Bowden, you're a monster. Come, come, Mr. Hughes. You enjoy killing as much as I do. And see, cut it. Let's check the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Right, here we go. I'm Scott Rouse. I'm a body language expert and analyst. I train law enforcement in the military interrogation and body language. I'm also a trial consultant and keynote speaker. Mark? I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language. I help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, and gain credibility every time they speak, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase? Hey, I'm Chase Hughes. I'm an expert in human behavior and interrogation. I also develop tactics and techniques for Uncle Sam and other government agencies. And I've just published a fiction book called Phrase 7 that involves mind control and hypnosis stuff, which is fiction. Greg? Greg? I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, and resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written a few books on body language and behavior, and I spend most of my time with corporate America and on Wall Street. Excellent. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, President Trump before he was the president. And this is a, a sort of an interview he did. I don't know where this is. Greg, do you know where this is? I think it's some political conference. Bloomberg Politics is there. And this is before he even announced he was going to run. So it's 2015. And he's Trump Trump, not President Trump. Yeah. Probably the Trump that people expected. Yeah. Yeah. And you see him as, and you said earlier, Greg, he's just a regular old guy in this. You just see him being the regular old guy. However, we're going to see a lot of the same things he uses Today, when he's giving a speech or when he's talking to someone or in, in discussions about something, about several different things. So as we talk about baselines, this is a great way to get a baseline on because he's relaxed and he's in his element because he's got all the attention. So everybody's talking to him and he's, he's, the, he's the key here, the key player. So as we go through this, what we're going to do is point out some of the things we see as a baseline and uh, let you know what some things to look for on President Trump when he's, when he's talking. One other thing is all the baselining tips we've been giving you in the four videos. We're going to use those terms so that you'll see what we're talking about. We'll reinforce the term as we're talking, but when we talk about illustrators and barriers and adapters and regulators or, or modifiers, we're going to talk in that way and remind you what we say. Excellent. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. There we go. Hey, come hey join us. how are you? How are you doing? Come, come join Good us just real quick. You. I just want to ask you, how do you, how, how do you think you did? The response was fantastic. The room was packed. We we did really well. Yeah. I really liked it. I had a good time, yeah. and the response, as yeah. you saw, was great. Now you said eighty percent chance you're going to run. There's a very good chance, Is and I would say, yeah, 80%. I would say that I have a whole big team. Yeah, you, you can ask Al. People? Al's a big supporter. Well, yes. Al is a great guy, and he's yeah. done a great job getting this whole thing moving, right? Yeah. Thank you. Right. Mr. Trump, can you explain the team? We, we've read some stories recently. You hired up. I have a team. I have a team in, uh, in New Hampshire. I have a team in Iowa. I have a team in New York. We have a great team. I'm making a decision. And I may surprise you. I don't think I'm going to surprise you that much. But a lot of people but say this is still <laughs> just a stunt. Well, because look, you know what? You have I, I trouble selling say, stuff with until, that publicity. Until, until, well, and I still get the best response. We still had the packed house. Yeah. And the response was great. I mean, we just had, I really enjoyed it today, and I think they enjoyed it. But until I make that decision and actually announce, you're going to have skeptics. We were I talking understand. to Al about the scrutiny of the Mrs. All right, Mark, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. So what we see straight away is some tagging, some tagging for ownership. We see uh, Trump's hand go out to do a, I guess, a, a left-hand handshake. And then his other hand comes in to tag the guy to say kind of I own you he then tags him back we're going to see that play out later on in terms of status and ownership we see um, I think we saw steepling at the start there 
open palms, symmetrical, both of those things I would say are trained. They're not things that people naturally do. People don't really naturally steeple on the whole. They don't tend to naturally do um, uh, very open palm gestures in symmetry. These have been trained. Uh, great ease with the mic. Look how easily he picks up that mic and starts talking into it. This is usual for him. He's very, very comfortable in the center and the limelight there. Uh, and when you notice as well, the ease of repetition there. Uh, I may surprise you. I don't think I'm going to surprise you too much. So, so this is classic word play, and he's really good at that, really good at taking a phrase, repeating the phrase, altering it slightly, altering the intonations from downward to upward, and actually it's quite entertaining what happens there. Actually, that repetition and slight differentiation is a classic of comedy. You'll hear it in Seinfeld, it's classic New York comedy, it goes right back to Italian, uh, Italian Commedia dell'arte. So very, very comfortable here, very, very comfortable in the limelight. That's what I've got for you on that one. Excellent. Chase, where you got? Agree with Mark. And throughout the whole video, just keep an eye on where his hands are. I watched this uh, long-haired British guy do a TED Talk on this one time, and he talks about this, keeping your hands open, keeping the hands symmetrical, exposing the soft belly, which I thought was terrific. And that just that one body language gesture alone in communication is a game changer. I watched Mark do the keynote live. I watched him demonstrate that with everybody. It was a fascinating difference to see. Uh, he starts off with the undersided handshake, which he's famous for, kind of goes in on the underside. And sometimes, you know, you hear people say this is a submissive thing. I disagree. I don't think there's uh, any merit to that. But, you know, he does the Trump handshake where he does the underside grip and then he like tries to pull you out of your chair. So we, we're starting to see this normal behavior before his presidency goes right into steepling. One thing he does to start taking ownership right away is he steeples those fingers together and his elbows push out just a little bit, almost where they're touching the guy's shoulder just to his right, right behind him. So he's taking up more space, becoming a bigger boy. All the gestures are symmetrical, like Mark said. Um, he uses a lot of team pronouns. So we're seeing all the way back to his earlier interviews in the 1980s with Larry King, he is using a lot of information that's a lot of people do this. A lot of people like this. Many people accept this fact. So he's doing a whole lot of socializing. So if I want to persuade a person that uses that type of language, that's the type of language I'm going to use. That's how I'm going to sell the product. We see a lot of that there. But we also see his left hand tilt away when he talks about something negative here in just a minute. But right here, he's saying we got teams in other places. He's using his right hand to talk about positive things. And we'll keep an eye on which hand does what throughout the rest of these videos. Scott? At the top when he walks in, it's almost, uh, he goes into that, that steepling so quickly. These, I think it's just a thing, uh, Mark, you'll, you'll probably be able to, to speak about that, but it just goes right into it naturally. And it looks kind of odd for some reason. I don't know, I don't know why, but it's one of those things where it just looks, he just goes into it automatically. I guess he's just, he's used to doing that. This is the first time, there's a thing he does that I call the three and a half. You, know, you got four fingers, but it cuts down to you got four fingers of the thumb. It cuts down to three and a half when he starts this number. This is the first time we see that in this very briefly, and what and you see this when he's talking. When he'll be talking about things, and he'll be doing his, his his illustrators and gesturing. But when it's about him, that finger comes in. He starts this. I think so and so, and that's why this happens. And when it's over, those fingers open up, and he'll go all the way out. Sometimes he'll do it with his fingers all the way open, but most of the time it's like this. So this is the first time we see it. We see it later on as well. And he, he does, we see the, the, the pinch that he does when he's sitting specific little things, when he's just, pink, right, when he gets specific about stuff. Sometimes he does this one, but this time I think he's doing this a couple of times uh, to make his point. And um, his illustrators start getting big. And when he starts saying until, until, to make his point, he's got this going briefly, and then he starts making his, his point, and then, and then goes in saying until, until, as he finishes his pre-arranged uh, point that he wants to make. So that's what I'm saying. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so a handful of things. Here's where I'm going to differ with two of you. I don't like steepling. I think people do it instinctively and badly. And the reason I don't like it is because when you're in a position of authority, you steeple up. 
when you start to feel compromised, you rotate your hands forward. And then when you feel compromised, you open your hands down this way. And you can see he's also adjusting. He's taking away energy, so he's adapting at the same time. I think he's keenly aware, and he's been coached to steeple because it makes him open his hands and do that. Mark, I think that part's great. But when you rotate your hands down, I can see compromise, or, or that you are compromised. That gives me a control and authority over you. But he quickly moves out of it. He does something here he doesn't do well as president. He removes his elbows from his side. He's open. When he's president, he's this way. Since he's been president, his elbows are at his side. It's a deviation from his normal open baseline that I think made people like him better, never mind policy and all of that. I think he's more likable with his hands moving more free. His forehead, he is a social creature. His forehead, the organ of, of connection with other people. He's using his forehead a lot. If you notice, we talk about illustrators and the way we communicate. You would call it body narration, maybe, um, Chase, but I call it illustrators. I'm making my point. He uses his forehead. He engages you, and then he starts pulling you around with his eyes and that. And you'll see when he goes to debate, he does the same thing. Few adverbs. Again, not President Trump, Donald Trump. Because in, when he's President Trump, it's bigly and he says fantastic, which is a small word for President Trump, but a big, you know, just a normal word. Um, a couple of other things you see are he's got basic illustrators moving and he's just more open, more fluid. And you'll see more of that change in a few minutes, but he uses his forehead to engage and he's very social. Pay attention to that face. Excellent. And I know, um, as speaking of steepling, when Greg and I did this, this course, our body language tactics.com, there was, as we're talking, the camera goes to him, it'll go to me and I'm giving it one of these numbers. The next thing you know, mine goes all starts, goes all the way down as well. And I started thinking about that. And a couple people have asked me about it. They're like, Oh, I thought you said it's doing that. It's not good. And then I started thinking, Greg is alpha in the shit out of me during that. So that's why I think that's why it happened. So you're actually seeing that, that go down as it, as it, you're seeing me be alpha as it happens. He's not trying to, he just does it naturally. But if you're, if you're conscious of it, it's okay. It's just that's one more thing for you to get your head around is not rotating. It's the yeah. only reason I don't think it's a good thing. So the thing yeah. about steepling is, is it's actually quite cognitively tricky to match up the fingers. And that's why when we watch somebody steepling, the, our instinct goes, oh, that person is really you know, yes. smart and authoritative because that's actually quite a difficult move to do. The problem with it is it's not likable. It reads as maybe authoritative and intelligent, but it doesn't win on likability. So as a general rule, I would never ask a politician to do this in terms of gaining authority, uh, simply because it's just not likable. And likability on the whole, I would say, is, is a better option. Well, it's the Bond criminals. It's a Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. It's all the bad guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, everybody good? Yeah. Did you guys all see Scott smile and pull his lip into his mouth when yeah, Greg was talking about Bond criminals? <laughs> <laughs> we know this is going to lead to nowhere. Yeah, yeah where is this? No. Where's this okay. Yeah, yeah, everything's I, fine. I just set up. Right everything's going to be point. fine. Everything's going to be fine. Chase, just so you know, it takes time to set something up. <laughs> I know. I can't wait <laughs> until I see it. We were talking to Al about the scrutiny that Mrs. Bush has gotten in the last couple of days of two big high profile stories. What's your view about whether it's all right for reporters to write about people who may be the first lady of the United States, well, it's including tough. your wife, if you run? Well, she's pretty good. I don't know what you're going to find. You're going to have to let me know. But I have to tell you, they were very rough <laughs> on Mrs. Bush. That was tough stuff. That was nasty. You think it was over the line? I don't know because I don't know her, but it was nasty. You raised. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this one, there's not a whole lot here, clearly, but when he first starts, there's a lip compression piece. You know, we, we, we're talking about emotion, and we always say that's containing something, whether it's words or emotion. A lot of time, it's emotion when you do, I always call it lip grip, but compression is, and we all do it, men, women, men more than women. It's typical. If you go and look at every, one, every person who's ever caught in a sex scandal, every man, you'll find a picture of him going, it's always identifiable. When you, when you ask about his wife, he's like, yeah, good luck. I don't, I, I don't have anything on my wife, and and you see his face engaging, whether he believes it or not, it's another story. But his brow is up when he's asking for approval, when he's trying to make the connection, as he's talking about, that was rough stuff to do to Mrs. Bush. So it's all engagement. He's in a dance. Watch his cadence compared to the cadence of the people he's talking to. They're almost identical. Speech patterns, the whole thing, they're almost identical. He's connecting. Chase, what do you got? Sorry. We can see his left hand come into motion here, too, when he's talking about how nasty and, and forget the word that he uses here. I think it was nasty. He's using the left hand. So we're starting to see a positive on the right. 
a negative on his left hand, which goes back to uh, another way that we can influence him. I won't do a recap here, but that's called gestural hemispheric tendency. We saw that lip compression, which I teach, that means withheld opinions or withholding. And I think he is withholding some kind of opinion about what happened to her here. And that's a master class example of the subject being exposed by another person. So he hears a few words and the body instantly reacts to it. And that's a perfect textbook example of what lip compression looks like. If you're in sales and you start mentioning the terms of the contract and you see lip compression, that's the objection you're going to have when you try to close the sale. So that's, that's really important to start looking for that in everyday life, just to take a look at lip compression. One thing that really stood out to me uh, was that when he said, Mrs. Bush, and what they did to her, he pointed at himself. That was really nasty what they did to her. And he's, he's pointing at himself, which I thought maybe a little foreshadowing in, in the way back of his mind, he knows that's coming. I know, I know he knows it's coming. We all do. Mark, what do you okay, think? Mark? Yeah, lovely. Uh, I'm just going to pick up on one thing, which for me shows training, which is he's got the mic in one hand, his other hand is still up in what I would call the truth plane. Normally, when somebody gets a mic in their hand, the resonance for them is, is kind of a TV interviewer or stand-up comedy, and one hand begins to hang, and it just kind of reposes there. He's been trained to bring his hand up into the truth plane there, do open palm gestures, and, and that's hard to do. You don't do that unless you've been told that and trained that and you've had the repetition of that. Now, of course, he's had a lot of time in entertainment, a lot of time uh, on TV. So what we need to understand is uh, his baseline is he's trained and he's very comfortable and he's very good at this. Whether you like him, whether you don't like him, whether you don't care, he's trained and he's very good. And negotiates so, every contract in his construction business personally, personally, down to air conditioning. Not like you expect from a CEO of a company that size. Yep. Wow. So Mark, go over the truth plane one time since you brought that up. Let's go over that because people may not yeah. be familiar so, with So that. I split the body into a bunch of different horizontal planes. You've got the grotesque plane, which is anything below the belt line. It has an effect on the viewer and it has an effect on you. It doesn't really mean anything particularly is happening in your mind, but you'll be getting a certain viewpoint of me as I'm gesturing in the grotesque plane. As I come up to the truth plane, especially if I do open palm gestures, then you'll have a sense of a little more calm, a little more assertive and open because I'm an open at a very vulnerable point of my body. When I go into the grotesque plane, my center of gravity drops. I go into rest or fight or flight. Up here, chest height, that's the passion plane, heart rate, breathing rate go up. You see, I get a bit more uh, energetic, more upward inflection. I could keep on going up, but we've got closure and disclosure, thought, and then we've got the ecstatic up here as well. Now, again, when we, in terms of reading body language, we're not looking to read somebody for, are they telling the, the truth? Are they ecstatic right now? It's more about how they'll influence and persuade others by adopting these different gesture planes on purpose or unconsciously and get a certain effect from the audience. So quick run through there of, of those gesture planes. I will say, I saw Mark do that keynote there, uh, here in Virginia. And uh, I think three weeks later, and, and granted, Mark does a one hour keynote on this thing. And I sat there, uh, he invited me as, as his guest. I sat there and watched the whole thing. I was just kind of mesmerized. Two weeks later, I go teach a course. And I'm like, I'm going to do the truth plane. <laughs> My courses are nine, nine hours in a day, one day. So I do the truth plane for a whole day. And at the end of the night, I could barely pick up a beer. <laughs> I had like, We know better than that. Chase. I had <laughs> muscle failure just about. But my biceps hurt at the end of the day. But it was very effective. I noticed a, a distinguishable difference in, in the audience there doing that. Yeah, it works for sure. What I'm seeing is, and, and Chase, I'm going to go a little, against a little bit what you said. Because I think what we're seeing is, as he's pointing toward himself, he, he's, and what he's, his lip grip or his stress mouth, which I call it, 
he doesn't like that that happened to her. And he sees that as an emotional thing. He tries not to show emotion. So when he's, he's doing this and he's pointing to himself, if I, I, when I paid attention, I saw that he was, when he talks about things that bother him, when I think so-and-so, that's what's going to happen, he'll do this. So he's bringing it toward himself. That's, that's what I picked up on it. That's, that's the way I read that. So when, he's, when he talks about um, problems or situations or specific things, when he points to himself, that's something he's thinking in there. He's thinking me about that. That, you know, that was nasty, what, what they did to her. Was that, so he, and he just does it once and then comes out. But that's what I, that's what I took from there. I think we're in agreement. Sense? I think we're in agreement okay. on that. Okay. All it's right. negative either way, right? The whole point yeah. is negative. He's, it's about yeah. him. Yeah, he doesn't he, yeah, he like it. Um, that's uh, everything I covered on mine, so that's about it. So, all right, everybody good? Mm-hmm. Let's move on. I don't know because I don't know her, but it was nasty. You raised the question of Jeffrey Epstein in your remarks about pre- in the Q&A. Well, I think he's got a problem. I mean, what do you think I'm, the problem will be? I, I don't know, but that island was uh, really a cesspool. There's no question about it. Just ask Prince Andrew. He'll tell you about it. Uh, the island was an absolute cesspool. So, the Clintons uh, are friends And he's of been yours, there right? for many times. The Clintons are friends Well, I can't say friends, but I know You're friendly. Them. You know them. Are they you, play are, at my clubs you, a lot. I have clubs, uh, and everybody likes are, to play at my clubs. Are you saying there's a political problem for her if she runs for president? Uh, it could be a political problem. Look, he could be a political problem. Right now, he's Teflon, and right now, maybe not. But he could end up being a political problem. I want to ask one question. Al, talk to us about Tommy. All right. We're right out of the gate. What I'm seeing with this one is when he takes that when he mentions Epstein he gets that big deep breath because he's getting ready I'm sure he's loaded for just you know loaded for bear on this one so he has, and I'll leave most of that stuff to you guys but the thing that got me was when he when he brought up Prince Andrew do you see what he was doing he's looking at that guy Al across the thing and his eyebrows go up and they come in like dude we know what's happening they're almost like they're they're trading a shits and giggles joke there or something they both know that nobody else knows that's when I said, holy smoke, something, something's up there. Because then he said, when he says Prince Andrew, and he looks, it just dead eyes that guy, and he does that little smile, and he goes into a complete Duchesne smile. It's small, but it's there. It's complete. Everything, everything you look for in that is there. And it lasts for a second. So that's, that's the one that, that I saw that I, that I thought was just was awesome. Um, yeah, so that's, that's all. I just want to make sure and, and point that out. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I, I think it's even bigger. I think when I see the little, it starts with amusement, but then it erupts to a full-blown Duchesne smile, and his face almost lights up. It goes to the center of his face. He's got eye contact. And I think he's actually saying more than those two people know that Prince Andrew knows some things that he shouldn't know. And I think if I'm Prince Andrew and I say, see this, I'm like, why not buy that video and destroy that? Because this doesn't look good for him. His brow rises, his eyes smirk. He um, stops for a second when they ask about Epstein, his hand stops illustrating. And I'm sure they're asked, he's thinking, what's the next question? But when the question comes back, he starts then to use, to your point, Chase, his positive hand to illustrate again, because it's not about him, it's about somebody else. He's doing that request for approval a little bit as he's trying to fish out the guy across the room from him to get him engaged. We use our brow to fish out cooperation or recognition. And he's doing that as he pulls his brow up, looking to see. Guaranteed, the other guy's brow rose too. We couldn't see it. And then his goes back to some kind of normal. That's what I had. Excellent. Chase, what do you got? So with that eyebrow flash, if you, you're you watching this right now, nobody's looking at you except for us. Go ahead and try to make an angry facial expression. What does it do to your eyebrows? It pulls them down and together. And as primates, when we do the opposite of anger, that's how we gain agreement with other primates. We'll do, uh, naturally do the opposite of it. And if you want to try this as an experiment, the next time you're at Starbucks or you're getting your groceries or something, uh, raise your eyebrows and do what's called the eyebrow flash at the cashier or whoever as you're introducing yourself. And about 85 to 90% of people will return the eyebrow flash with no memory that they did it or no awareness that they returned it at all. So that's just a fun trick you can play. You do it every time you see somebody you know, every time. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So one thing I noticed here that I thought was very noteworthy, that this is the only time that anyone who's been photographed with Epstein hasn't distanced or softened the severity of what was going on. He very openly calls it a cesspool, and Trump uh, is – for, for you guys that don't know, a lot of people don't know this, but Trump loves adverbs and adjectives. I think everybody knows that. Bigly. 
Bigly. Yeah, it was a bigly a cesspool. But he loves to repeat those words. Whenever he thinks he's got a good little hook that just kind of came out randomly, he'll do it three or four more times. But I thought that was remarkable that he didn't soften the severity of it. He didn't say, well, it's, it's a interesting place down there. It's really bad, or they've got some stuff going on down there. And people who are guilty, just as a quick tip, tend to soften that. Instead of saying murder, they'll say hurt. Instead of saying steal, they'll say take. Instead of saying uh, sexually assault, they'll say interfere with. So we'll hear a lot of those softening things with guilty people. And I thought that was r- remarkable to hear that. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so utter delight. He's delighted that this whole subject comes up. I think that's what we see there, Scott, for sure, is that that big intake is like, I'm going to need a lot of oxygen for this because I got a lot of stuff in my brain that I need to get out around this. So, And, and I think it's worth noticing, you know, often people do talk about these in-breaths or sniffs that he, do, that he does. Again, that's normal for him. People put it down to anything from a deviated septum to drugs, depending on, you know, where they're biases but ultimately what we do know is that those long in intakes or short ones are a, a classic for him one extra thing because i concur with everything that's said there uh, you know especially that duchenne smile and his that twinkle in his eye as that comes up pure delight is his ability to say the exact opposite of his opening statement uh close on so right now it may be a problem and right now it may not it's it's a great example right now it may be a problem and right now it may not it's it's a brilliant ability already as a politician to be able to say the exact opposite in the same sentence as you say the, the the pro statement so again watch out for that because that is not abnormal for him to be able to argue with himself in the same uh, sentence. And and it's useful in politics when you're having to try and serve everybody. Excellent. That's my only problem. I'm bringing one more guy. Well, can I ask a question? Come on in. Mr. Trump. Oh, look who he is. Look who he is. Ask Joe a question. You play reporter for just a second because we're we're making this. Joe's not allowed to be on your show. Yeah, he is. He's already on. He's already been on. I've got his vote. I've got his vote. journalist. Ask him a question. How many years are you going to Renew for and will you take Sleepy Eyes Chuck Todd's place on Meet the Press? <laughs> Can you believe this? He goes guy? right with a media on question. A separate yeah. network. Look at that. How about a political question? Was oh, it a bad? No, no, that's, that's a political, political question. question. <laughs> uh, that's just pretty a much of a political right. question. I'd, I'd actually like the answer. What do you think about it? Will you take Sleepy Eyes' place? <sighs> You see, he just keeps coming at you. He's doing That's really a well. Yeah. Yeah. Want to hear. I never, well, I think he should. I think he does a great job, Al. I think he does a good job. Al, he's a he fellow should do it. Meridian, Al, my friend. Al, 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 ask Mr. Trump friend. a question about Jeb, as long as he's here. So- All right, Chase, what do you got? I think he makes a point out of looking away while he's asking the question because it's more dominant. While he's asking this question to this guy. Uh, Look who he is instead of look who we've got here. Look who he is. Speaking to the guy's uh, status, I have no clue who that guy is in the uh, hipster shirt. Uh, So we go go into this uh, conversation here, and we see him go through this a few times, and he sees the guy try to dodge the question. So to reassert his control situation, he'll pop the question right back in the guy's face, and the guy just tries to dodge it again. And then he makes a lot of physical contact to reestablish some kind of control of the environment to the guy on his, his right. I think we see three touch points there. There's a couple more things. I'll, I'll leave you guys to that. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so uh, I think there's, there's some height dominance from uh, the, the new entry coming in. First of all, Trump tries to block him out. He turns away from him. He says, look, 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 uh, look who he is. As you rightly say, it's pretty amazing that that construction of, of that uh, sentence or idea he turns away, doesn't stop the guy coming in. So now, yes, he fixes, gives him a question, but uh, takes his eye contact away because I think he doesn't like the confrontation at this point because he's seen the height dominance. I have to say, Trump's a pretty big guy, actually. So this other guy must be massive, must be massive. So... Um, and then there's a lip compressed smile that, I don't know whether I can do it, but 
it's not quite right, but it's close. Um, when he then does get eye contact and delivers the question to him. So interesting. I think as a baseline, what we see is that Trump likes to be the center of attention. When he's usurped, it's, it hits him quite hard and he tries to block it. And then he tries to suppress his aggression around that with a smile and doesn't quite manage it. Good one to look out for when the debates come. Because I think Brilliant. we saw some similar stuff in the last debates with, with, with Hillary when he got usurped or, or wasn't getting enough attention. Uh, if, if I were doing the training for debate prep for his opposition, I'd be wanting to trigger that in him to get him off center around that. There, there's my, there's my take on it. But great, uh, great turn in the interview here. Great, great, great turn. Sure. Excellent. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so here's where I think you're starting to see Trump. I mean, he's Trump, the friendly guy, bat, 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 and stuff around. And then they ask him to talk to this guy, and he starts to bring out the patented Trump move. Yeah, he is a big guy, and he's accustomed to being the biggest guy. When somebody's any kind of a threat, whether it's psychological or physiological, he starts to do what he does best, branding, sleepy eyes. He brands that guy right off. This is the flaming bag, right? Throw it on your porch, you stomp it, or it burns your house down, and you do, you get on your shoes. He does that, he strikes a profile. That's his move of dominance, that chin out. You see that. Then he starts using patented moves that only he uses in his circle, with all that little stuff we've talked about. You, you talk about the throwing the L's and having the okay sign and that kind of stuff. He's using that. And then he asks a question, not one that he's just haphazardly thrown out there. He's got something in his head already, and he bats that out. This is him moving at his best and moving into dominance. When you see him do it, this explains a lot of what his presidency looks like because he's constantly challenged as president. And we're seeing that Trump the machine come up instead of Trump the guy you want to hang out with and have a few beers. That's what I think. Excellent. All right. Well, what I'm seeing is now that guy, Joe, he's from MSNBC. You know, Love and, him. <laughs> yeah. So what I, what I thought was when we, when we see him, you can see him in the background and that is the loudest, his shirt is the loudest thing in the whole room for the whole video. That's the loudest thing there is. So he, he wants attention. He's, he's famous on MSNBC. So when he comes in and starts asking questions, he's trying to be cool because this other guy, it's his show. And he's, he knows not to come in and say, Hey, you know, be the grandstander and steal his, his heat from his show. But he's the, he's the guy trying to be, cool about it but when he comes in and greg as to what you were talking about uh, about becoming becoming the alpha and 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 sort of taking over and, and all of his, you guys everybody's talked about that as you see this guy start to wilt he can't even look at him when trump asks him a question he looks away and talks to the other guy and the, do, you, do you hear what this guy is saying or when he runs back to talk to him trump's dismissed him and he's talking about something else so it makes him look even smaller then we see him back up and put his hands in his pocket and we all know what that means. That means, man, I'm the lowest guy on the totem pole. And he's trying to scooch out. So you see him kind of very slowly. There toward the end of it, you see him kind of slow down and scooch out. Which, and I saw that. I, I got the, again, I got the giggles because it's, it's, the, it's the classic case of the, the uh, kid who wants to be popular. And he's popular over in his, in his group. He's trying to go to the other group and be popular too, but have respect for what's going on. But at the same time, he wants to, to you know, Trouts the other, or, or just be on the same level as the other guy. But when he gets in there, he realizes he's not. So I think that's why he starts shutting down and getting quiet and sticks his hands in his pocket. So that's what, you know, that's what I got. That was Anybody great. Else? Yeah, I love that. Thanks. Yeah, that was a very good one. Yep. Yeah. Right. And the amazing thing is, is how fast this is happening. Yeah. How quick this is going. Like you know, Trump's now on fire here. And I wouldn't want to be in the middle of that. That's now. Mm. You know, it, it's pretty tricky to handle, and, and he's handling it pretty well. This is, yeah. if we talk about what we were talking about last week with knowledge and wisdom, this is a channel he uses all the time, and there's a tripwire, and this is, I would say Navy SEALs don't think about how to shoot, but if you shoot, he's just waiting to shoot, and he found somebody. That's what I think you're seeing. Yeah. Excellent. All right, we good? There we go. We're trying to turn everybody into journalists here. Do you have a question for Mr. Trump on that, Jeff? Well, I have a question about him. And that is, uh, you know, I'd rather you, have you uh, ask me about Jeff. Right. And that is, you know, how do you overcome the perception that 
you've talked about this now two or three races in a row. You're simple. serious yeah. this time. Well, I really talked about it last time, and we were very disappointed in Romney. But it's very simple. If I announce, it's all gone. That's right. That's right. Once I announce, it's all gone. That's right. Right now, they said, do you think you'll do it? Do you think it? We had the biggest crowd. We had the great reception. But if I announce, that goes away. What's your instantly. timeline? He said June. June. Why June? Huh? Why June? It just seems to be a time, maybe before that, during the month of June or before. Are you what afraid are you? of messing up your hair? Well, it's, it is mine. I mean, put that Joe on. will tell you, it's mine. It's I'm, giving, I'm giving you this hat to put on. You're going to spend your own money, or are you going to raise I, I better be careful with that. <laughs> I better be careful with that hat. I'm sorry, Phil had one more no, question. I was just going to ask, what do you need to see between now and June that will tip it one way or the well, other? Well, I want to see how everyone's doing. I want to see where they're coming from, where the people are, where the voters are. I want to see that I have a good response. I'm going to have a great response now. Will that continue? I think it might. We had an amazing response. We had a room full of people. I don't know if you got to see it, Al, before. All right. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so this one, I'm not going to steal a whole lot of thunder on this one. This is probably the best illustrator example I've seen because Trump does something very few people do. It looks silly in a man his size doing it. On this hand, on that hand, middle of the road. And he does it. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. And he does it a lot. Pay attention to him in the debates. He'll do it. It's almost regulating because it stops somebody from talking because it's so much movement. But it's illustrating what he's thinking. He starts off with his thumb fidgeting a little bit when the guy says, I got a question for you. And then he's honest. He said, rather talk about Jeb Bush than me. That's interesting. And you can tell they have some rapport there. He, um, he does, he's that on the fence piece. And then he does some other things. His normal, I'm not going to steal your thing about his finger, but he's doing yeah. his normal illustrating with his hand back to your finger pointing you were talking about earlier. He's making his point about what he's thinking. He's talking about having people and looking about that. And then he uses what I typically refer to as a gesture, which is an emblem or whichever language you use. It's a person using something everybody understands. And he does this to excuse an issue. Forget about it, right? Very New York thing to do. Just throw your hand out and you got it. So there's a lot of body signaling. He's illustrating what he's thinking. He's using his whole body. He's using a gesture. He's using a, an adapter. So pay attention to those pieces because they come to play when he's actually in debate and he gets pressure because he'll start dancing and doing the same thing. And people will say, oh, he's uncomfortable. No, that's just him. So his brain is punctuating in that. As he's aged and he's heavier, he may not do as much of it this time. We'll see. Excellent. And to your point of the, of the, uh, the three and a half, he does it again. If you'll notice, he does it when he's talking about him. And I think to me, those kind of things. So his gestures are getting kind of big here too. So when he's doing, when they're starting to get up into the, into the passion plane, Mark. And uh, as he's doing that, but every time he talks about Sorry. himself, he, <laughs> yeah, he brings it in. He's got that finger pointing toward him. So again, that's one of, that's the main thing to point out to me. And there's other things, but I don't really grab them all. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, the thing that most interests me is is this ownership piece that's going on and playing out between the the guy who's closest uh, to him. Uh, he says, "Put on this hat." So that's a clear ownership signal. Wear something that I've told you to wear. You know, he looks at it. I'm not quite sure what's written on there, but regardless of that, he goes, he hangs on to it and he sticks it underneath his armpit. Basically goes, okay, that goes there in a, in a, in a sweaty, smelly part of the body there. And I'm hanging on to that now. And then he taps the guy on top and the back of the shoulder. Again, does a suppressive gesture to say, I'm the person in control here. I got the hat. You're not getting that back now. And now what we're going to see is those other two parties around him, we really see them start to back off now. There's that, that challenge has been met. He's taken complete control of this situation. Again, interesting baseline for this because he's used to taking control, being in control, and he does it incredibly adeptly. And again, I want people to look at the speed that this is happening, the verbal speed of, of this. Uh, the baseline is, is Trump, Trump's mind at this point uh, moves very, very fast, and he has some very fast techniques of turning phrases around, jumping in, controlling the conversation. Quite formidable. Excellent. Chase, what do you got? In here, to tribute to Greg here, we see his eye accessing home, and I went back to his 1987 Larry King interview. And then to his 1998 interview with BBC Hard Talk. And we see a, a complete match in his home here. 
So when you're watching the debates, let's look where it moves. But there's one to be on cue and ready to rock all the time. When he, even when he has difficult questions, we don't see a lot of accessing where it moves a lot. But they move from here to about here. So that's where his eyes move. And when he has emotional recall, during the BBC Hard Talk interview, we see down and right, especially when he's talking about when he first met Melania on another Larry King episode. And they're talking about their relationship building. So we see that come up here. I think one thing to take note of here is that he does make an attempt to make eye contact with everyone in the conversation so that everyone uh, is feeling involved and someone may, someone with a different bias might say, oh, well, he's trying to dominate everybody. I genuinely think he's trying to involve everyone in the conversation. And we see a lot of confidence here. But what we see from the beginning, just this one video, from the beginning to the end, we start to see that three and a half, as Scott dubbed it. We see it about 60 to 80% of the time when he's lacking a little bit of confidence or he's not really sure about what he's saying. And anytime a finger curls in towards the palm, I call this digital flexion. The, the fingers are kind of retracting a little bit. I think that's, that's his version of digital flexion where that finger is kind of coming in. I do think there's a lot of merit to it pointing towards itself as well. And that's all I got other than the socializing statements, him saying thousands of people are in the room. You'll hear him do that every speech, no matter what video you click on on YouTube. And, and, I, and as, as far and what you're talking about, where he's, he's looking people in the eye, I call that wrangling. When you wrangle your, your group because you're making sure everybody's in there, you're, you're, you're sort of keeping them, keep them together. I just call that wrangling. One other thing that I didn't mention here, you talk about wrangling and getting eye contact and all that. There's a clear channel. When this other guy answer, asks the question, I don't know who the guy is, but when he asks the question, air goes open between them. If you notice, the room changes. The guys are not as juggling around and doing all that stuff. And it turns into a, two, uh, into a conversation. It's clear that there's clear air between the two of them. And then he makes a joke when the guy says, hey, what the hat thing? He says, here, will this mess up your hair? He's making some kind of a jab at him. And he quickly says, it's mine, and puts the thing under his arm. Only two other two things I noticed. All right. Everybody good? Yeah. Mr. Trump, and thank you. You're going right to surprise a lot of people if you run. Not I me, a lot of people. I think that I will surprise yeah. a lot of people. And I think if I did run and if I did win, I would be able to make America hey, win Hey, one last again. question. What does your sister think about you running? Well, I have a sister who's a federal <laughs> judge who's a fantastic woman. She'd be 100% right, Mr. Trump, thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> All right. Nice see you. Don't, so don't, right. don't wear that hat out of the rain. Okay, Mark, why don't you go first? And you get that handshaking thing all over. Yeah, you. so, you know, it's great to see the classic, isn't it? And it's great to see that classic handshake here. It's, it's, it's not something that he invented just for, his, for, for, for meeting other world leaders. He's been doing it a long time. Uh, it, what's interesting is that battle for power that started quite early on in this interview plays out at the end where he offers out the hand, uh, gives gives the, the opponent the upper hand, okay? So, so unbalances them slightly there and then pulls right in there to get them off balance. It's a classic, always good to see it. Wouldn't want to be on the other side of it, though there are some countermeasures that you can play if you know it's, if you know it's coming. But classic, classic Trump. Uh, there's a, the guy uh, next to him uh, in the dark suit, uh, dark hair, does a, a little... Um, tongue out at, at one point. I'd be interested to go back and kind of work out what he's talking about about there, but bit, bit off there on Trump's baseline. Great to see the handshake. Well, listen, go, go over the part where if somebody trumps you in that, with that handshake and pulls you, talk about that, Mark. Talk about yeah, how you, so what, what, you have, the, what you have to do. And I have actually uh, trained another world leader in, in how to tackle this particular move. So you've got to know that it's most likely to happen. So you've already worked out Trump is most likely to grab my hand and pull it in. What you do is you come in hot. You come in really fast and you extend your full hand and you lock it, you lock out the arm, which means you've got a lot of energy coming in there and it's not going to get shock absorbed by your, your arm or wrist being able to move. So, at moment, so, so the moment Trump gets that, he knows that, that unless he absorbs the shock, 
yeah, he's going to be pulled off balance. So he has to stabilize himself. Uh, so it's, it's, it's great to see that he was always doing this from, from moment one. And just, you know, if you do get in a room with him, remember that countermeasure. You don't, you don't have to get in a room with him. One of my first jobs as a civilian, I worked with a construction manager who tried it on me and he weighed about 120 pounds. It was funny, actually. <laughs> you know, yeah, one time, I, I just pulled him back. <laughs> and, you know, that, that's not socially acceptable, but it was a construction site. So it's yeah. not quite the same as world politics, right? What are you going to say? Jay, what do you got, Chase? What are you going to say? I worked in uh, expeditionary combat field for a long time. So I was at Expeditionary Combat Command. We had a two-star admiral there who was famous for doing that. And everybody knew I was the, the psychology guy. And they're like, oh, Chase, what are you going to do? And I, and I told everybody, just wait. And uh, when he shook my hand, he, you know, he's, he's a huge guy, a triathlete, incredible human. But he does that thing. I mean, we're all warriors, but he's a, he's a pinnacle kind of dude. And uh, he did that thing. And I pretended like it hurt really bad. And I had an ACE bandage under my wrist that got exposed only when my arm got uh, pulled out. So it was good. We, you know, we did a prank on him. I let him know that that was the, that was a joke. <laughs> oh Lord. Well, what do you got on this, on this clip? In this clip, we're wrapping things up. We see the classic handshakes again. We see more physical contact on the back and the hands. He's making eye contact with each one of them, but only very briefly as he's wrapping things up. But one thing you see when he's saying, I, I can be president and I can make this country great again, that finger goes back. And even when it's hanging down at his side, you can see that finger still back. And the moment it shoots outward is when he's asked about his sister shoots back into this confident position. There's no more bending of the fingers. So we see another small confirmation that this might be something where he's certain the fingers are more likely to extend. And that's all I would say. There's nothing certain about that. Maybe call it a rule of thumb, or you can call it a rule of index finger, whichever <laughs> you like. Excellent. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so here's Trump telling, he's starting to tell you he's going to be a great president. If you watch him, when it, even when his finger is back, he's doing a modified baton as he's pointing down, if I were president. And then he, when you get to his sister, to your point, Chase, he goes big, because that's association. My sister's a federal judge and a great one. Now he's, he's got to make that point that she's great because he's building this box. And he starts lots of illustrators. And those illustrators are all saying, listen, 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 listen. And then he starts his slogan, if I were, I'd make America great again. He knows exactly what he's doing, and he's starting to tell you already what a good president he's going to be. Excellent. That covers everything I was going to cover as well. So, all right. So, everybody's good? Yeah. Good. All good? Excellent. All right. Well, there's that one. It's in the can, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.